Uh, Alrighty guys, Day Daddy here, and just want to start as always by saying thank you guys for taking interest in my channel. Hope the content's useful for you. If it is, I really appreciate it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button so I can continue to grow and provide more quality content. And if you really enjoy the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee, and the information and the link for that is in the video description below. Okay, now, get out of, now we got that out of the way. Um, let's get into the content for today. So we'll be talking about um, Scappy. This is the third video um, in the series, and specifically, we wanted to know how Scappy can integrate with Python. And we're going to have a demo today um, and start looking at how we can use Python to manipulate, or Python and Scappy to manipulate packets. So let's hop in. All right, so I've already prepa prepared a, a little Python notebook here. Um, so we'll go ahead and get that set up. No, thank you. Okay. So the first thing here is we need to import Scappy. So the easy way to do that is say from uh, from Scappy all import all. Um, in this way, this is the best way I've found. So you don't have to actually write Scappy dot in front of every Scappy command that you use. So. <coughs> I think that's the easiest way to go about it. Um, these are uh, just other libraries that I actually, I didn't even end up using Socket. I didn't use a, uh, OS either. Um, I just tried some things with them. Um, okay, so this conf.usepcap true, we talked about that in an earlier video. I'm gonna go ahead and run this so we can get our libraries installed. Um, we talked about this in a previous video, but basically, if you type conf, once you've imported Scappy, you type conf, then it's going to list out all of the configurations <coughs> that you can alter. Um, and you actually can't see it. Yeah. So you're not able to actually see it here. But I want to open this in another text editor. There we go. Now we can see it again. OK, so notice how use BF or use BPF here is true. Um, we are not using Linux, so we don't have TCP dump. We're using another library called libpcap. So we need to uh, alter this config file. So how do we do that? Um, we can say conf dot and then get the attribute we want to alter. In this case, it is uh, use pcap. And we want to set that to true. So we'll go ahead and set that to true. And if we look back at this file, we'll see that now this is true. And by, def by default, it has um, went ahead and changed use BPF to false. So we should be good to go now uh, when running the rest of these commands. So I just wanted to highlight that. And also another thing too, um, to check, I had issues uh, earlier with this, but basically make sure, so run conf.iface and make sure before you start doing this that um, the network interface that you are actually wanting to transmit packets on is the interface that, that is showing up here. Because um, originally I was going to do this in Google Colab, and for whatever reason, I could not get the get my Wi-Fi interface or the Wi-Fi interface of my Mac to show up on Google Colab. So anyway, I ended up having to do it. I mean, I, I love VS Code as well, and this is this is a fine a fine tool, but uh, I've just really enjoyed working on Colab recently. Anyway, um, just before you start, make sure that you um, check this. And if you want to see all of your interfaces, you can change this to S. And this will show you all of the interfaces that um, that Scappy recognizes that you can use. So we're going to, just going to go ahead and change that back. And we don't really need to update anything, so we're all good. OK, without further ado, um, I want to look at creating DNS packets um, in Scappy. Because, again, the whole point of this or what we're going to try to build towards is we want to make a DNS forwarder. 
um, and not just any DNS forwarder, we want to make a DOH or a DNS over HTTPS DNS forwarder. Um, I guess that's kind of redundant. I guess it would be a DOH forwarder. But anyway, that's the goal. So that's what we're going to start looking at. We're going to look at um, creating and manipulating packets, DNS packets today with uh, Scappy. So, uh, and before we get into this, I'm also going to move this over, make it a little bit smaller. So that way we can see Wireshark on this side. So that way when we start um, sending packets, we can see them pretty clearly. All right, cool. So there we go. Um, so our first one here. So we're just setting uh, a variable, same thing we did in the last video and we're looking at the command line. Um, and basically it's the exact same command that we would enter directly onto the command line. We're entering it in uh, Python. And thanks to this import statement, we can do that. Um, so again, we have an IP packet. We're starting um, with the source IP. Uh, we're going to just some random destination IP. Uh, we are selecting the UDP port to be 53. And then we are calling or we're creating, a, putting a DNS payload on top of that. Um, and we are re requesting recursion. That's what this, this flag is here. Um, and then we are generating uh, all of the correct parameters um, for uh, the actual query, the actual DNS query itself. So, and um, and I'll, I'll, well, we'll see the, the full implications, but basically this, this generates three different parameters, but when we run the command, we'll, we'll actually see. So we're gonna go ahead and run it, and we're gonna generate that packet and there we go, we generated the packet. And as you can see, um, under the DNS, oh man, it doesn't, it doesn't actually show you. Um, well, let me, let me go ahead really quick and show you what it generates so that basically you understand um, why that's important. But if we do that and then we say DNS, dot show <clears throat> uh, let's see here op code so let's go to the original query so QD QD here is basically the Q name and type and um, op code. So just, just be aware that this is gen going to generate three different things. And you'll see that when we actually generate the, the, the packet itself. It'll, it'll be more clear. Okay, so now we've generated the packet. Now we want to send it. Uh, and we're just going to send five. We're going to send five packets and I'm going to listen um, on this IP address. Or sorry, we're gonna filter um, for this IP address. So there we go, it's already 53, so let's make it 69. Okay, so no packets there yet. So let's go ahead and run this command. Boom, 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 two more. And excellent. So there we go. We've created uh, some DNS packets. We've sent them. And it even printed out the summary for us. So not too much different than the command line. Um, but it's nice because now we can save it. We don't have to retype it every time. And if we wanted to, we put it in a for loop. Uh, we can integrate it with other, other programs. So it's it just makes things way more scalable and way nicer, I think, to work in Python than on the command line. But the command line is good for, in my opinion, smaller things. So we'll take a look at this. Um, talk about what I was saying earlier with the query itself. So there we go. It has um, the name, the type, and the class, the two things I was trying to get at earlier. So these three variables are contained um, 
in this DNS QR uh, object, and they're just automatically generated. So like basically whatever you don't specify is automatically generated. Okay, um, so now we sent our first DNS packets, and they were successful, which is good. But now let's see if we can make this more realistic. Let's see if we can actually um, send something to a real DNS uh, server and then get a response back. So that's the goal here. So let's see if we can send. So now we need to be monitoring for 8.8.8 .8 and see if we can get a response back. So let's create the packet first. And again, it's going to look pretty much exactly like the first one, except now we're just sending it to 8.8.8 at 8.8, .8, which is a Google Cloud server, um, or uh, a Google DNS server, excuse me. Um, so now we generate our packet. We're going to use this uh, nifty function called srloop, so send receive loop. So basically, we're going to send a packet and then receive it and then send one again and wait. So basically we're going to send, wait till we receive, send again, and we're going to do that for five times. And then we're going to store each of the responses or each of the packets that comes back in this uh, response variable or RSP variable. So there we go. Excellent. Very nice. So we sent a response or we sent, um, pack it out, got a packet back, send a packet out, got a packet back, and so on and so on and so on. So, cool. So that worked. Um, let's take a quick peek too at if it actually stored something in these variables. I think that it did, but I actually didn't check that before. So let's check that real quick. So there we go, let's check that. Oh, it's not show one, it's just show. It doesn't look like it did. I, gu I guess it just prints it to screen. Um, yeah, I think this just prints to screen. I thought it actually saved it uh, as a variable, but I guess it doesn't return anything. So never mind. Just, I'm glad I checked that so I didn't tell you guys the wrong thing. Um, okay, but either way, we've tested now that we can send out, we can successfully create a realistic enough DNS packet that it will actually be sent across the wire to the real server and it will send us back a real response. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, now to get us thinking about the DOH forwarder, let's try something a little more interesting. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create just the message or just, just the payload. So if we look at um, this DNS packet, we're, we, we're just, we're just going to create this part. We're going to leave off all this other stuff. So we're going to create this part, the, the DNS part itself. Um, and then we're going to use curl to see if we can get a response, uh, a DOH response, DNS over HTTPS response from a, uh, DOH, uh, resolver or a, a DNS over HTTP resolver. And I just happen to know that 9.9.9 .9 is one that will work for that. So that's why I put it here. So first things we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build um, the uh, DNS part of the packet. So we basically the exact same thing that we've done up here Ooh, up here. Um, we're gonna do the same thing here and we're going to save it as uh, essentially a, a payload um, and then we're going to use the raw function to get the excuse me to get the um, the bytes associated and then we're going to use base64 uh, encoding um, to put it in a format that the that we can just stick into the URL and that the server will understand and so this is still going to be in bytes after this, and then we're going to decode it so it'll transform into a string. Um, and then if we print that, so we see we've, we finally got it back into the class of string. So we're going to stick this onto our URL here. So we've specified the server, the port number, and then that it's a DNS query. And then the DNS query equals this weird converted to string that we've got up here. So we're just going to add that on to the end. 
And then finally, we're going to print curl-i for this whole URL that we've made. And the whole command is going to look something like this. And then finally, we're going to go to iterm. Um, and then we're going to paste this command in. And then we're going to run it. However, we do need to pipe the output into a text file because it's going to come out. The response is going to come back as binary. Um, and the terminal doesn't like that. So, or sorry, it's going to come back as bytes. Well, actually, maybe it's bytes. I forget. We'll, we'll run it and we'll see. But it's going to come back in a format the terminal is not going to like. So we need to pipe it into a, um, a text file so we can actually read it or look at it. So there we go. So it ran. It was successful. Um, so let's go open up that file and see what actually came out. So here we go, DNS response text. So there we go, HTTP or HTTP 200. Um, we have the, the header coming back and then we have all of this crazy gibberish down here. So um, I guess, I believe this is bytes. This is some sort of weird byte code. So anyway, whole point of this is the fact that the server did in fact send us back uh, a 200 which is good um, sent us back a header and they sent us back uh, some weird byte code payload so in all for all intents and purposes we have successfully uh, executed a DOH uh, request and gotten a DOH response back from the server so all those things worked out really well and uh, and the next, in the next video, now that we've kind of covered um, the basics of Scappy, we'll look at what uh, DNS forwarding actually is, and we'll take a little bit of a look at what um, DOH is, how it differs from uh, DNS just in general, um, and after that, we will move into actually making the full DNS forwarder. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, again, if you enjoyed the content, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe so I continue to grow and produce better and better content. And if you really liked the video, you might even consider buying me a coffee. And the instructions and the link to do that is in the video description. Um, also, if, even if you don't want to do any of those things, just please give me some feedback in the comments uh, and let me know how I'm doing uh, or if anything's unclear or there's stuff I can improve on. Um, thank you guys again and have a great rest of the day.